בוקר טוב ילדים, אז הרבה זה שמורן. שלום רבי. שלום All right, everybody, turn on your cameras so I can see your wonderful little faces this morning. All righty, everybody, turn on your cameras. Here's Allie. All right. Yeshua, you start us off with some prayer. The Lara's are going to do the Shema. And Hadassah is going to do the Ten Commandments. So, Yeshua, you start us off. Thank you. Thank you there for this day, for giving us. And please help us so we learn more. And please help us that we can obey and that we could have your Shema and that we listen to our parents and you should name Amen. Hadassah, everybody give Hadassah the wiggly fingers, wiggly fingers, wiggly fingers, wiggly fingers. Double wiggly fingers. All right. All right, now, uh, Miss Allie Mae, do you have your homework that you were supposed to do the other day? Yes. Well, let's hear what you have to write. To build your spiritual muscles, you need to be separated from the world. You need to be alone with God to talk to him about, about what you need to know. You need to be able to think about God and his word and not ungodly things. You also need physical things like food, rest, or on Shabbat, you rest from all work and focus on God's word. You need to study his word every day and obey his commandments. Studying your schoolwork helps you understand God and helps you make decisions based on what you learn. Studying your schoolwork also helps you build your spiritual muscles. Social studies and grammar helps you preach God's word to everyone. History helps you learn about the Bible and everything God people did. Giving offerings to God also builds spiritual muscles. Offering meat and wine on the altar. In the Bible, it commands that you also add salt. We also give spiritual offerings like praise, worship, and prayer. Another way to offer to God is to tithe. All right. Very good, Ms. LMA. Very good. Very good. All right. Shmui, did you do your work? Yes, I did. Yes. Well, let's hear it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Three. No, it's three. Uh, uh. 
Um, which one is the one I did? We, 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 we have, have to, to, do, do the, the red book. The, the red book. That's it. Um, and another word. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what you do for building spiritual muscle? That's all you do? Smoothies or something else? Um, we, we got um, let's, this is what he, What's the what? of the light? Yeah. All right, we'll come back to you since you can't find it. All right, so now we're, we were talking about uh, the birthright yesterday. Uh, Victoria, read verse 32. Or she twenty five verse thirty two. Look, I'm about to die," said Esau. "What use to me are my uh, wait? What use to me are my rights as the firstborn?" All right, thank you, Victoria. Very good. All right, so let's talk about this. He's arguing with his brother. Esau is arguing with with Yaakov. And he's saying he's about to die. Really? Is somebody about to die if they're having an argument? Let's see. What do you think, Hadassah? Hadassah, what do you think? Do you think he's about to die if he's talking and he's arguing about food? Uh, he doesn't look like he's about to die. He's like what he's does somebody about, look like when they're about to die? Somebody looks like when they're dying is like they're like, <sighs> I'm dying for hunger. Okay. Is somebody going to be able to talk when they're dying for hunger? Um, no. Um, a little bit. They're going to talk about, um, talk that they're dying hunger. You think they're going to talk a little bit if they're dying of hunger? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Shmui? What do you think? Uh, they, they die from hunger. They, they go like, I'm hungry. Give me some more. Have, have you ever been really hungry? <laughs> have you ever been really hungry, Shmui? Yeah. I, I wait for the food. No, but when when are oh, you gonna die? When are you really hungry, Sammy? Uh I don't mind, but no no no. When are you really, 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 really hungry? Really, really, really hungry. Well, well, listen up, Sammy. When when you were really really hungry, did you, were you, were you gonna die because you were really really hungry? Uh, yes or no? Uh, uh, maybe yes. Maybe yes. All right. Well, let's see, Ellie Shaver. Have you ever been really hungry, Ali Shaba? Have you? No, have you ever been really, really hungry? Yes or no? Yes? So say yes. Okay. You've been really, really hungry. Were, were you were you gonna die because you were really, really hungry? Were you gonna die if you were really hungry? No. 
Okay, so you you weren't gonna die because you're really really hungry. Okay, what about you, Lev? So Esau says, "Look, I'm about to die." Said Esau, "What use to me is my rights as a firstborn?" Do you think he was really gonna die because he was just you know he came in from the open country? Do you really think he was gonna die? Well, I mean, he wasn't going to die because when you die, you don't talk much and and you don't, you don't have any strength to stand up and you don't exaggerate. <laughs> yeah. So he was exaggerating because in the picture, you literally see him standing up and he says, look, I'm about to die. He would have collapsed on the floor if he was about to die. Yeah, then then he does come in from the from the the open country, you know. So he was he's tired, but why would somebody say I'm about to die, Lev? I mean, like I know it says that he came in from the open country, but it does not say that he was gone for seven days. Not end in the country okay. chasing deer and all. Mm. How long did Yeshua? How long did the Messiah Yeshua go without food and water? Uh, oh, they go up on He went forty days and forty nights. So do you think? So do you think Esau was gone forty days and forty nights on this hunt? No, because hunting doesn't take that long. It might just take like two or three days, but it does not take 40 days to catch one deer. <laughs> yeah, because by the time 40 days ended, you would have killed the deer because you would have figured out a trap for it or follow it. Yeah, or follow the deer family. Okay, that was a very good way. Allie's got a hand up, Allie. Hunting doesn't even take two to three days. It you don't even it doesn't even take a full day to hunt, really. Unless you have like really bad luck and you don't even see a deer or like you miss or like you shoot the deer in the wrong spot and it runs. But most of the time, if you see a deer and you shoot it in the right spot, then the deer might run a little bit, but you'll find it in like maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so Nally, what is he saying? Is he lying saying he says I'm about to die? No, he's exaggerating. He may be really tired from like carrying the meat back or something like the old deer back, but and <laughs> no, he's exaggerating. He's not lying. So why is he exaggerating to his brother? Maybe to see if you just give him meat for free. Like the, uh, the okay. stupid one. Say it again. Um, maybe he'll give, maybe he's hoping that, um, Yaakov will give him the, uh, some, a bowl of the stew for free. Well, do you think he's got to purchase it from his brother? Well, he was saying, sell me your birthright. And so he was like, look, I'm about to die. What use is my birthright to me now? Okay. All right. So let's go to Victoria. Victoria. Victoria, Allie's given us some information about hunting and that it doesn't, you know, it takes a day or, you know, maybe because he doesn't have a gun. Might take a little longer. Okay. So Victoria, what does it mean what used to me are my rights as first part? What's he talking about? What what, what does it mean what used to me? Um, I guess he's saying like if if he's like about to die, then what does it like really matter to him if of 
but he's not about to die. Yeah, so he's like it, saying if he's gonna like die, what does it really matter? Like his rights as the firstborn. So he's trying to like basically say that like if if um if he doesn't give him food, then he's gonna die and then like it it won't even matter like his rights, I think. So he's means okay victoria what is the rights of as a firstborn do you remember what the rights as a firstborn are no no oh no all right let's see let's see yeshua do you know what the rights of the firstborn is since you're the firstborn? The rights of the firstborn is that you get to inherit all of your father's things. Like his toothbrush? No. No? His his hair his hairbrush? No. Well, what do you mean all your father's stuff? Say it again, please. To inherit his clothes. I can't hear you well, Yeshua. To inherit his clothes. His clothes? So you're going to yes. walk in your daddy's shoes? Yes, when I'm older. Okay, when you're older. Okay. Mia, Mia, what does it mean to inherit? What does this rights of the firstborn mean? You know, he says, what use to me are my rights as the firstborn? So basically, the rights of the firstborn or the birthright is that the firstborn of the family, which in this case would be Esau, that after, after Yitzhak gives his blessing to Esau and dies, then Esau's gonna inherit all the possessions. Not, the, not necessarily the clothing, but more like the valuable things, like the cattle and like whatever riches Yitzhak stored up. So, so Esau, after, after Yitzhak dies, um, Esau would have inherited all that thing, all those things, like the valuables. Okay, very good. Lev, you're waving your hand, your arm, or you're trying to do spiritual muscles. I want to say something. Okay, go ahead. So, um, the birthright is something that the firstborn has, um, and what the firstborn earns is maybe like the the bible of his father um the valuable stuff like um pictures of of times when they went out like when they went out to the park or something like like memories in a way that I'm pretty sure that's what the firstborn um, gets handed down to the firstborn. Anything else? Um, because what you know, he's he's saying you know what used to me is the rise of the firstborn. So he cares about pictures, you know. They hold memories. They hold memories. And show the history of the family. Those things are important. Okay. Are okay. All right. So <clears throat> he does. Esau doesn't care about that, Lev. He does not care about it because if he says 
what used to me are my rights as the firstborn. That means it's like you can take, for example, birth the birthright as money. It's basically the birthright is kind of like money down the drain if you give it to someone else without caring. Because Esau just to an irresponsible person. Because Esau he did not know what he was doing. He he just wanted food. But he should have thought first to go tell his dad or his mom because because then he doesn't get the stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about his choice. Okay, very good. Very good, everybody. Because this is a very interesting part that, you know, is good for you young people. You know, especially you teenagers as you're getting a little bit older and getting <clears throat> getting towards adulthood. Okay? Responsibility and honor. Okay? So the responsibility of the firstborn is Esau's. Okay, as we see in our, our picture here, you know, it was a, they're both about they're twins, so they're both about this, you know, same age. Esau is a little bit more muscular because he's always out you know, hunting and stuff like that. So you're going to need muscles to hunt. And, you know, bring back whatever you caught, like a gazelle or a deer or something like that. You're going to have to carry the stuff back. And instead of having honor that he's the firstborn, he shows dishonor, okay? What do I mean by that? Uh, Let's see, we'll go to Victoria first. We'll go with the older kids with this question and I'll work for the younger one. What does he, he's not showing honor to being the firstborn. He's showing dishonor. What does that mean, Victoria? Dishonor? The word dishonor? Well, he's saying, look, he's saying, look, I'm about to die, see yourself. What used to me is my rights as a firstborn. So he's not showing honor or respect to the role he has as firstborn. He says, what used to me is like, is that something that you should be using or honoring? And what's the yeah, word honoring? honoring. Yeah. It's, what? it means that like you, you respect it and you like, you don't um just like, think it's whatever. Think it's whatever. What do you mean by think it's whatever? I don't speak millennial. Uh, no, you like you don't think it's like whatever. So like if if you were in the situation and that like you were very hungry and someone asked you for like your birthright, you wouldn't just give it to them because like you're hungry and they don't want to give you food unless you give them that. Like you would search for more options of food. Okay, so he's not showing honor. Ali Mae, what, what do you think? He's not showing honor or respect to his birth rate. What does showing honor mean? Cause you know, you're getting kind of, you know, you're a teenager. You're like 12 years old now. And um, you know, you, you're getting older and you might, you need to understand this. Allie Mae. First of all, it's 15, not 12. 15? Yeah. Okay. All right, so you're a 13 year old. No, you're 15. What does it show, mean to show honor and respect to something? Well, it definitely means not giving away something that's very, very important to your family and to you. Um, giving away something that's important? Well, I mean, like, important to, like, the, like, as important as the birthright. See, because it, if oh, the, first, important. the firstborn gets the birthright and... Somebody asks them 
oh well here you can have this and and um and i'll take your birthright and change for this and he gives it away and then that is not honor and respect because that's just not honoring your mother and father for one because they <sighs> Because they, um, because it was his birthright, and they gave birth to him first. And then for another, it's dishonoring the family name. Okay, it's just, there, there you go, it's dishonoring the family name. All right, there's something that you young kids and you, you teenagers got to think about, okay? Sometimes you think short-sighted, meaning you only think about the stuff that's right in front of you, okay? Esau is thinking about something short-sighted. He's hungry. So Yaakov is thinking long-term, like down the road, like way down there, okay? So something that should be very valuable to you in the spirit, you need to think about before doing it. And sometimes when you're young, like Shmuley's age or Adas or Elisheva or Lev or Yeshua, you know, you you only think about the next hour. Okay, a lot of times when you're your age, but that's you know, because that's the way God is on your mind. But if you have something that's valuable, especially you teenagers, as you get older, you get more responsibility, things that are more valuable. You have to think more down the road. Okay, not short sighted, but long sighted. Okay, short sighted is you only think about stuff that's right in front of you. Everybody put your hands up. Everybody think short sighted, you only think, put your hand up. Short sighted is only thinking about things right in front of you. Okay, and long sighted, put your arms way out and go, oh, I'm thinking down the road. Okay, so I'm thinking down the road. All right, so that's what Esau was doing. He didn't honor this great gift that he had in the firstborn, okay? He's not thinking down the line. He's only thinking right here and right now, okay? And many times young people do that, okay? They only think of right here and right now. They don't think about down the road, okay? Sometimes when, when I was a kid, um, my, my parents would give us an allowance, okay? You would do jobs and you you'd do chores in your home, like I had to take out the garbage and empty the dishwasher and load the dishwasher, okay? And I would get $5 a week for doing that. And every, you know, time I'd get my, my allowance from my parents, I would burn a hole in my pocket, meaning I would go and spend that money right away at the candy store or buy baseball cards or something like that, okay? That's short-sighted. Instead of putting your money away, buy something really big or save it, in case you need it for something else later on. Esau was, was not respecting his birthright. He was short-sighted. So it's some things in the life lesson that you guys got to understand. Okay, let's talk about this a little bit longer. All right, Mia, read with feeling, verse 33 and 34 of Genesis 25. Yaakov said, First, swear to me. So he swore to him, thus selling his birthright to Yaakov. Then Yaakov gave him bread and lentil stew. He ate and drank, got up, and went on his way. This Esau showed how little he valued his birthright. All right, very good read, Mia. Very good read. Thank you very much. All right. So let's see. Hadassah, no, we'll start with Elisheva. Elisheva. Elisheva, we just read the verse. Was he stopped dying since he just ate and got up? Was he really dying? No. Why, why do you say he wasn't dying? He's still alive. Why isn't he dying? Why do you why do you say he's 
Why do you say you, why do you think he wasn't dying? He was facing eating. Yeah, say it loud. I finish eating. He, he finished eating. He finished eating and he got up, so you don't think he was dying? No. I know. No. Okay, no. All right. Dot, so what do you think? Do you think he was dying if he just picked up his food, ate, and then and then just got was he lying, Adasha? Um, no, he did not die. He ate the, the food, but he was still alive. He did not die. He was alive still because he ate the food. So why why did he lie about dying then if he just ate ate and lived real quick? And you don't you don't you're dying and it would take you a while to, to digest your food and stuff like that. It's because he 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 was just hungry for for just some food and that's all. He was just tricking his brother that he was um um dying for hunger. Okay, so you don't think he was really dying? No, he's still alive. Okay, you sure what you got? He's still alive. Yeah, you sure you got your hand up? Yes. When Yusuf, Yusuf was, Yusuf, wasn't a you. You weren't eating the soup. He he wasn't um. He wasn't dying. He was just pretending. He was pretending? And he sold yeah. his birthright for pretending? But eat the soup. He was very exhausted. So he ate Man, the soup. Why he says he ate the Instead of giving Jacob the birthright, why didn't he say, no, I won't give you the birthright? But give me that tube, and he snatches, he snatches it out of the hand. Then, then he won't take the birthright. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why do you think he faked that he was dying because he thought his brother would give him the soup anyway because he was dying? I guess so. I guess so. All right. Let's go over to. Victoria, Victoria, in verse 34, it says, And Yaakov gave him bread and lentil stew, so he gave him both. And he ate and drank, got up and went on his way. Thus he so showed how little he valued his birthright. So, just eating some bread and stew, somebody's not going to die just by just eating that? Victoria? Hey, what do you mean? So was he really dying? Oh, no. If if he was like dying of hunger, then like he wouldn't have energy to to just like get up and like leave. So that was a lie, obviously. So he saw was lying to his brother? Why why would he lie to his brother? Well, like I guess it's an expression because like he was just exaggerating like it, it was a lie but he was like exaggerating so yeah it, he was exaggerating so that his brother would just like give him the food like faster but he didn't believe it so isn't an exaggeration a lie and isn't lies bad? Yes. Yes. So do you think he even deserves to have the right as the firstborn if he's a liar? No. Well, I mean, he can change that, but like, he doesn't really show that he cares about his birthright so 
doesn't like really value it. Okay. All right, let's go over to Lev. Lev, uh, Victoria, that was good. Lev, do you think that Esau was lying and when he said he was going to die because he was hungry? Of course he was, because it literally says there that, so it says, then, es then Yaakov gave him bread and lentil stew. He ate and drank, got up and went on his way. So if he got up and went on his way, he wasn't dying. Because if he would have died, he would have been crawling out. Or have he need time to recover was, first. Yeah. He would need time to recover first. Before. Because <laughs> if you don't recover, then you can't run anymore. He was more tired than dying. Okay, so he was tired, so he was exaggerating, he was lying. So exaggeration, okay, listen up everybody, it's another life lesson. Exaggerations are lies, okay? When you're exaggerating the truth, okay, that is like a lie. And liars don't get into heaven, okay? Liars, you know, one of the top ten commandments is don't lie. Okay, don't lie. Okay, uh, so now we got to move to this next part, Mia. It says, Esau showed how little he valued his birthright. What does that mean? That how little he valued something. It means he didn't care. Like, like, basically what went through his mindset. All right, death positions or no positions. I don't care. I just want my soup. And, and and Yaakov's asking for him, so fine, he can have it. He didn't care about it. So if somebody doesn't care, should they have the responsibility of being the the the, the firstborn? Should should that be taken away from him? He shouldn't have the responsibility of being the firstborn with the birthright. Because that once Yaakov takes the birthright, no, 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 not takes it. He didn't steal it. They made business about it. So, so of course, Esau sold his birthright to Yaakov in exchange for a bowl of soup. So, yeah, so, so because of what we discussed um, before about Yaakov, of him being a righteous man, then was it, was it good that, 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 he, that he bought the birthright? No. But, but then we real then we can infer we can make it we can guess that maybe maybe Yaakov was more responsible than Esau because if Esau doesn't care about his birthright, it means that he probably was an irresponsible person. No matter how good he hunts, no matter how good he probably hunted, he pro his conduct didn't match up to being responsible for the birthright. Okay, responsibility in your birthright. Mia was talking about it and gave us a very good answer. Okay, valuing something, you should value something like your, your best toy or your, your favorite blankie or your favorite whatever. Okay, your favorite shirt, your favorite coat, your favorite thing that value. Okay, and Esau wasn't valuing. So let's take that understanding and at the bottom of the page here, Allie may read us Philippians 3, verse 8. Not only that, but I consider everything a disadvantage in comparison with the supreme value of knowing the Messiah Yeshua as my Lord. It was because of him that I gave up everything and regarded it all as garbage in order to gain the Messiah. All right, thank you, Ellie May, Ellie May, and Ellie May. All right, so Rav Shaul is telling us that he considers everything a disadvantage, meaning something that's less in value than the supreme value of knowing Messiah. 
what is what does he mean by comparison? Let's see. Yeshua, what does he mean by comparison? What do you mean? What does the word comparison mean? C O M P A R I S O N. Comparison. Hmm. Comparison means that. Hmm. When you compare something. Like, um, like one of the masks, like one of the masks, what? Like one of the masks things, one of the mask things, one of the mask things. Explain that a little more. Explain like, that. I don't know what you're talking about. There's like a little sign for the mask, for the mask that yeah. It shows to um, divide. Well, dividing is not comparing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Lev, do you know what comparing means? If your shoe is a little stuck, maybe he can hear if you got the answer and then he can uh, understand. So what comparing means is that is that basically you take an object and you take another object and you, you look at it and you and you look for the similarities between those two between those two objects. Okay, that was a good answer. Yeshua, what did Lev just say? Um, let's just say that you can, you take on a toy or something and and another thing and then you compare it you you look at it and you compare it like those two dogs right next to the persons one has a hat one doesn't okay very good now you know what the word compare means and everybody does it. Everybody does it. If mom gives, let's say you, you got three kids, and mom gives you three cookies, and she says, okay, you can have one and give the uh, other two cookies to the other two people, okay? Every child is gonna compare which one's the biggest and take the biggest cookie, right? And you're going to take the biggest cookie for yourself. Mom gives you a big, medium, and small cookie. And you got three kids in the house. And she gives the three cookies to you and say, you can have one and give the other two to the other two kids. You're going to look at the three cookies and you're going to compare them. Okay? Adasa or Smoothie's got her hand, her hand up there. Okay? You're going to compare the cookies and say, I'm going to take the biggest cookie. Okay? I'm going to take the biggest cookie. And Allie Mae was holding up two objects. Okay? Comparing the triangle to the circle. Okay? You're comparing them. Okay? So we're talking about Philippians 3.8. Not only that, but I consider everything a disadvantage in comparison with the supreme value of knowing Messiah Yeshua as my Lord. Okay? So he's comparing everything else is less than knowing Yeshua, which is very true. Okay, so now we go back up to the top of the page. Elisheva, did Yaakov steal the birthright from Esau or did he get it fairly? Did Yaakov steal the birthright from you saw, or did he get it fairly? Where's the picture? The picture. Do you think he stole it, or he gave it to him? 
he's stolen. Okay. He stole it. Why do you think he stole it? Does it look like stealing to you? Why do you think he stole it? No, no. no look at the picture. They're talking. So he's asking for the birthright. He has it in his head. Is that stealing or is that giving? Giving. Okay. It's giving. Okay, so you think it's giving. Shmui, what do you think? Did Yaakov steal the birthright or did he get it fairly? Did Yaakov steal the birthright or did he get it fairly, Sammy? Uh, maybe. Maybe he's. Maybe he. Steal it? Huh? Maybe he steal it? Okay. Why do you say he stole it? Because he was. He was. He was hungry. So his brother said, sell me something and I'll give, I'll give you the food. Is that stealing or is that yeah. proper? Is that okay? Um, uh, that maybe that's, that's, uh, maybe that's, you stealing an offer? Oh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. That's three maybes. Hmm? What do you think, Adasa? Smoothie's stuck. Um, is that I stealing think... or did he? He's. Steal the soup. Just saying, just say what you're gonna say. Don't look at me. You steal it. You think that? You think that Yaakov stole it? Um. Yes. Why well, not steal it? Steal okay. It. You... Keep saying, keep saying. He's okay, stolen. you sure? What do you think? I think. was not that was not correct what what Esau did what do you mean I don't understand your answer it's because Esau Esau did, should, did, shouldn't do, did that you shouldn't have sold the birthright yeah That's it. That's okay, me. The birthright the birth. is really important. So did Yaakov steal it, or did, was it was it fair? It was not fair. It was not fair. Okay, you think it's not fair. Okay, so the three Laras think it's not fair. Lev, what do you think? Do you think Yaakov stole it, or he got it fairly? Verse 33 gives us the answer. It says, so he swore to him, thus selling his birthright to Yaakov. It says selling, not stealing. And, and plus, it would sound kind of funny if it says, so or he swore to birthright. him, thus stealing his birthright to Yaakov. May I, may I just say something? Okay. So, yes. <laughs> something, something. That's one word. No I'm kidding. Um. Now for first thirty-three, I I agree with Lev, with Lev's point that she says the selling his birthright. So it means that that if the Bible outright tells us that that Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of stew means that Yaakov purchased the birthright by giving the bull stew in return. So they, they did business when it came to the birthright and the bull stew. 
So it's only fair to say that 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 Esau sold it to Yaakov just for just for food. Now, why Yaakov did it, I don't know, but it's only fair to say that they did business for it. Okay, so we got two that say Yaakov was correct. Three that say that Esau was correct. Victoria, what do you think? Did Yaakov steal it, or was it a fair deal? It was a fair deal because, like, it was basically a trade, and they both agreed on it, so no one was stealing anything. But um, if I was there, like, if um, if I was Esav, um, I would, like, if I were to make that deal, I would have, like, asked for soup, like, the entire year. So then it wouldn't, like, because just, like, a birthright for one meal, like, that's kind of, like, not fair, I guess. But it was fair because they both agreed on it. So, yeah. So you would have asked for more than just one meal. Yes. <laughs> so you would have tried to make a better deal. But you still believe that Yaakov was correct. Okay, so yes. we have three and three. And I think yes. Ali Shabas said that. Okay, Ali May, what, what do you think, Ali May? Was Yaakov correct? Or was Esau, did Esau, did Yaakov steal the birthright? Or was it given to him? It was given to him because if it wasn't given to him, it wouldn't say that Yaakov, or that he gave, he sold him his birthright to Yaakov. It would be, it, it would say that he stole his birthright. Okay, so this is very good because later on we're gonna we're gonna need this. Okay, so we got more that say that Yaakov was correct because yeah, Esau sold it. Okay, he didn't value it. He didn't care about it. Okay, he didn't care about his birthright. All he was was caring about the food. All right, so let's go into this next part. Got a few more minutes left of class. Uh, Lev, Lev, read verse 1 through 4, verse 27, verse 1 through 4, Lev. In the course of time after Yitzhak had grown old and his eyes dim so that he couldn't see, he called Esau his older son, and he said to him, my son, and he answered, here I am. Look, I am old now. I don't know when I will die. Therefore, please take your hunting gear, your quiver of arrows, and your bow. Go out in the country and get me some game. Make it tasty the way I like it. Uh, and bring it, to, bring it to me to eat. Then I will bless you as firstborn before I die. Okay, very good read, Lev. Very good read. All right, so as we move along in our account of patriarchs, Yitzhak is Esau and Yaakov's father. Um, he's getting he's very old, and he says, "I want to bless." Esau before he dies. Okay, what does it mean? Hmm, Ali May, what does it mean? His Yitzhak had grown old and his eyes dim. What does it mean by eyes dimming? That means that he was um, because sometimes, sometimes when people grow old, their eyes, their eyesight starts to go away. So it like their eyes get dim dimmer. They 
they can't see as well as they used to. Like my like my grandpa, um, my or well, my great grandpa. Yeah, he um he was driving one time and his eyesight isn't as good as it used to be, and he got in a car crash. Okay. Okay. So his eyes, your eyes, your eyesight gets uh, bad a lot of times when you get older. Some, not everybody, but a lot, large amount of people, their eyes dim, so they can't, especially at night, they can't see well at night. Rebus and Kelly has that same problem. Okay. Your eyes start to wear out, and you can't see well at night. Okay. So he called these now. He's going to bless Esau, but Esau sold the birthright. Victoria, don't you think Esau should have told his father since he doesn't know? So this, this account shows us that the father and mother don't know. So this is way down, you know, way after the bowl of stew. Okay. Do you think Esau should have told his father? Yeah, for sure, because now, like, <clears throat> he's going to think that, like, well, obviously, there's no problem because he's, like, still the firstborn. He didn't sell it or anything. So, like, he should have, like, there when he said that I will bless you as the firstborn, he should have said that, like, he sold it to his brother. So these are still being a liar since he didn't tell his father? Yeah, well, like now that like, like now he had the perfect opportunity to tell him, I guess, because like he's saying that I will bless you as the firstborn and he's not the firstborn anymore. So he's basically like, he didn't correct him. He's basically lying and pretending to be the firstborn. Basically lying, or is he lying? He is. Okay, Mia. Mia, go ahead. You got the last word today. I think Esau should have told Yitzhak the moment he sold the birthright to Yaakov. Not wait until, like, until now. Now, he, now he may, now, if, because he went until now, he should have maybe told y Yitzhak so that he, so that, yeah, he might be, he, his father might consider him red-handed at that, he might get, be considered red-handed at that point because he sold his birthright. But I think Esau should have told Yitzhak the moment he sold it, but because he waited, I think he should have still told Yitzhak, said, Dad, I need to talk to you. Then I sold my, I sold my birthright to Yago for a bowl of stew. Because Yaakov wouldn't give it to me because when I asked him, or no, when I demanded it, some from him. Yeah, he should have, he should have uh, said something, but he was probably trying to hide that he was the firstborn because he still wanted the stuff, but he didn't value it. All right, we've come to the end of our class. We're going to close in prayer. I'm thinking of a number from one to ten. Yeshua had his hand up first. Thinking eight. Wrong. Okay. I like that smile thing, Lev. How did you get that? Uh, well, you go, for, well you for us on the toggle bar close. On the bottom, right next, right next to the um, options, next to, uh, by next to the more the options. options. There's a smiley face there that says reactions. Yeah, it should be on the bottom of your toolbar. Anyway, and I see the share button. One. Wrong. Uh, Victoria. Two. Wrong. Ellie Sheba? Um, oh. 
How? Five? Nope, wrong. Allie Mae? Seven. Seven. Wrong. Hadassah? Um, seven. Wrong. Mia? Um, nine. Right. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for letting us have another day of life and that we were able to 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 read your word and learn about you. Please have asked you that that today that you would help us to do our score and that we work diligently and that we can focus on it so we can get good grades and glorify it and that we be able to finish our work quickly. And help us to be, to be good servants after your own heart. In the show's name, amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Shalom. 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 Bye-bye. 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 B